I'm going to try to move super fast on this one, calculate derivatives of inverse trig functions. We've got formula sheets, we can just use that and maybe a little bit of knowledge about chain rules to do uh, these questions. So, first one here, the derivative of y with respect to x will be equal to, look at your formula sheet, it's going to be 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared, and then neaten it up, square root, 3 squared is 9, 9 minus x squared, that is your answer. So here's our second example, and you can do this one two different ways. So the first way to see it is to understand that uh, y equals inverse cos 4x can be rewritten as y equals inverse cos x over uh, 1 quarter. And now we can just look at our formula sheet and plug in the a value and the x value. Now when you do that, you get something pretty ugly. Negative 1 over root 1 quarter squared minus x squared. Now you can neaten this up first by squaring that. And then giving this a common denominator of 16, so 16 and 16 there. Now when you do that, you can put that over a single uh, denominator. But if you've got a whole fraction underneath a square root, that means it can be written as a square root and a square root. And finally, uh, if there's, we've got square root 16 on the bottom, we can rewrite square root 16 as 4. So, we have negative 1 divided by all of that, and dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction, which gives us a final answer of negative 4 over uh, root 1 minus 16x squared. Now, that's one way to do it. Uh, now, it's important to note, the derivative is that. Like, that's the derivative. So if you need to use it for something else along the line, you don't need to do all this fancy neatening up. You just find your derivative and then plug in whatever value you want. All right, let's try the second method of this, which some people might find a little bit easier. Method two is the chain rule, and we start by letting our 4x equal u. Now, if we let 4x equal u, we've got something easier to deal with. y equals cos negative 1 u. Now, if you look at your formula sheet, you don't want just like a, an x there. You want like an x over an a. Now, in this case, this is u over 1, and that's what we put into our formula. All right, so now we know that the derivative of y with respect to x will be equal to the derivative of that, which we know is negative 1 over root um, 1 squared, which is 1, minus u squared. And then multiply that by the derivative of 4x, which is 4. Now that's going to give us negative 4 root 1 minus u squared. But we know that u is 4x. So we can now substitute negative 4 root 1 minus... If that's 4x, then 4x squared would be 16x squared. And we end up in the same spot here uh, without getting a bit funky with our fractions. Now with the previous example you could choose to use the chain rule or use the formula directly. Here you've really got to use the chain rule because we don't have a formula for what if x squared minus 1 is in there. So we let the thing that we want to be u be u. Okay? And then we find our derivative. So the derivative of y with respect to x will be equal to, now that's u in there now, so we have 1 over square root uh, 1 squared minus, which is just 1, 1 minus uh, u squared. And then we multiply that by the derivative of that, which is uh, just 2x. And we now have 2x over um, root 1 minus, and remember our u was x squared minus 1 squared. All right, depends on how far you want to take this. Um, we can definitely do something here. Now, expanding x squared minus 1 squared, you'd get all of that, and all of that is being subtracted from the 1. So already I can see something interesting, because it's 1 minus positive 1, so those cancel out. And what I'm going to be left with is negative x to the 4, and then minus minus 2x squared, which is positive 2x squared. 
Okay, uh, whew, now what? Well, let's bring that up here, and I can see some common factors. When we factorize those common factors, we get x squared, uh, negative x squared plus 2. So let's rewrite that again, but this time we'll bring the x squared out, right? Because this is something times a something. We can bring out that x squared as an x, but as an absolute value x, because the x could be positive or negative. We don't really know. Uh, and root... I'll just swap those around, it's just a bit neater, 2 minus x squared. Alright, we're about done here, that's root x, so that should be a sort of bigger than that, sorry, absolute value x, root, all of that. Now, this x and this x can cancel out, sort of, but you need to be careful about how you're cancelling them out. If this x is a negative number, because at the moment this x could be any range of numbers except for this, we'll talk about that in a minute. This x could be any range of numbers, right? If that's a negative number, that means that thing inside is a negative, but the whole thing is a positive. So negative divided by positive makes negative. So if x is less than 0, our dy dx is equal to negative 2 is equal to negative 2 over this bit here. But if x is greater than 0, then this would be a positive divided by a positive, which is going to be positive. So then we get 2 over root 2 minus x squared. Okay, but there are some more like uh, bounds on this, right? Because this thing here can't be less than 0, which of course means it must be greater than 0. And then if we solve that, we're going to get x being between negative root 2 and positive root 2. That means that I can sort of change these bounds a bit and say if x is less than 0 um, and more than negative root 2, then this must be true. And if 0 is less than x, which is less than root 2, then this thing must be true. Now, I should say, that was some pretty hectic stuff uh, towards the end here. I've found a derivative here, right? All of this is like neatening it up and factorizing it and coming up with something that's a bit over the top, to be honest. All right, uh, that's calculating derivatives of inverse trig functions. Right there.